think back, it's been a while. When we were doing the graphs topic in um, term three, you might have seen something like this. Now, if you don't remember it, I'm reminding you now, this is the equation of a circle. Okay, it's the equation of a circle. You read off the features of this circle in a very similar way to how you read off the features of this parabola. I look and I say, the center is going to be at negative 1, 3. You read it in fact pretty much the identical way, you're like swapping the signs around. Okay? So you say the center is at negative 1 and 3. Some of you might remember as well how to read off the radius of the circle. The radius is the square root of this number, so in this case it will be 5. Now, this is a nice neat form. Just like this is a nice neat form, you've got the numbers that are important just there on the surface. Okay? But as you can see, sometimes you don't get things given to you in a nice neat form. They come in a weird form and you have to do some work to get there. Okay? So this here is a garbled mess that comes from if you took this guy and expanded everything. Okay? That's what you would end up with. See there's no brackets? Okay? So someone has expanded this and this is what they ended up with. So our task is to try and unscramble what's happened. Find out something like this is where you came from. How do I get back there? Okay. So, pick up your pen now. Okay, what did I ask you? Actually, about 15 seconds ago, which you would have noticed if you were paying attention, I asked you to pick your pen up. But what I wanted was for silence. Just because I know this is challenging. So pick your pen up, this is the wrong one. Pick your pen up. If you haven't written this um, long, awkward looking equation yet, write it down. And let me show you what to do. I'm going to, as the name suggests, complete the square here, but I'm actually going to do it, weirdly, twice. Here's why. Look at the original equation of the circle, up here. Right? Unlike the parabola, a different kind of object, do you see there's not one, but two squares here on the left hand side, right? So there's an x something that's squared and a y something that's squared. So in here, this x squared and y squared term, they come from two different squares. So I'm going to complete both squares. Here's how I'm going to do it. Here are all of the x terms. Just like I've been doing all day, I know I need to add something to this to make a square out of it. What will I add? It's going to be 4. Can you see where I got that number from? I halved and I squared. Halving gave me negative 2, squaring gave me 4. I've just added 4, so all the way over here on the other side of the equation, I'm going to add 4 there as well. Okay, Because I want to keep balance. This thing here is now a square. It's ready to factorize. I'm not going to do that yet. I've got more stuff to write on this line, but I will on the next line. Now I have a look at the y's. Here's a y term, and here's another y term. This, I can complete the square as well. I know you're used to seeing the x's, but it's just another letter. It's no big deal. I could have called it x or y or s or t or anything I like. Look at the number. What do I add? 25. 25. You halved it, gave you 5, you squared it, gave you 25. To the other side. Just added 25 to one side, so I want to stay balanced. Okay. Now see this object here? That is a square now. It's ready to factorize. Okay. Now, I'm coming to that 35. So I haven't finished this line yet. In maths, it's often very helpful to know where you're going, so you know what to do on the way there. Right? Do you see on the equation of this circle, all the numbers, just numbers, they should end up on the right hand side, right? So see this negative 35? Doesn't belong there. It should be on the other side. So to keep it balanced, I'm going to add 35 to both sides. It cancels with the minus 35 here, and it just becomes plus 35 over there. Okay. So I've done a lot of things on that line from here to here. I've done a lot of things because it's just a lot of equation. Okay? I've completed this square. I've completed that square, and I've put this number where it belongs, over on the right hand side. Okay. Now I'm ready to make the magic happen. I added this 4 in order to turn this into 1 squared. X minus 2. That's factorized. 
I added 25 here to turn this into what squared? Y plus 5. And lastly, I need to add up everything on that right hand side which looks to me like it's 64. 64. So, remember I told you, oh, if you get into this form over here, you can just read off the vertex. Okay. Well, now that I'm in this form here, I can just read off the center and the radius, uh, the center. What's the x coordinate? Positive two. Positive two. It's the opposite of that guy. The y coordinate is negative five. It's the opposite of that guy. And of course, you can also see the radius. It's just eight units. So. This is why, conveniently, back at the graphing topic, if we ever asked you to graph a circle, we always gave it to you like this. Because I gave it, if I gave it to you like that, you'd be like, what do I do with that? I, I don't know all the bits and pieces. But now that we know how to complete the square, you can see it's useful in these other ways. You can apply it to different problems. You can find a vertex, you can find a center, that's what we do.